So today we're going to do the handover video on the Burstner Elegance i920G. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. So firstly, coming over to the passenger side, you'll notice that you've got your fill-up points, which are just next to the passenger door here. Opening up the cap, you've got your diesel up at the top, and then below that you've got the AdBlue system, which is just there. This has been topped up with AdBlue, so you don't need to worry about that. And when that does need topping up, you'll simply get a warning, uh, warning, um, a warning uh, symbol rather on the dash. Opening up the passenger door, as you can see on the passenger door, you've got a little lever here. Pull that, and that will unclip the blind, so you can access your Emiscab blinds. These are on little magnetic strips which will simply connect onto the side and magnetise like so to black out the cab. You'll notice on the front cab as well, this is the exact same on the other side and on the front window of the cab, just simply pinch them two buttons and pull the entire uh, blind down to the base point there. And that, as I say, will black the entire cab out. Whilst I'm on this side as well, your bonnet release catch is on the passenger side, which is just behind here pull that to release the bonnet. I'll show you underneath the bonnet now, there's not many things that you need to know underneath there, however I'll just point out a couple of the basics. With the bonnet open as I mentioned, there's not many things to know underneath here. The main things to know is if you're ever jump starting the vehicle. If that is the case, you have your positive point here, which as indicated on the top of the cap has a plus on there, so your positive goes onto here and then your negative can just connect onto this terminal here. They're the main things that you need to know as mentioned, but just to point out a couple of more things, you'll notice that you've got your washer fluid here. You've then got your um, engine coolant. You've then got up there your brake disc fluid, and then your power steering fluid, which is just in the middle there. You then also got your engine oil here and your dipstick below that. And as I say, they're the main things that you need to know underneath the bonnet. Coming round, Onto the driver's side, you'll notice you've got your garage door here. This will access the two gas bottle points here. This will take two gas bottles, as mentioned, two 11 kg bottles, which using a pigtail will then allow you to hook them up and feed the gas through. You'll notice you've got your habitation door on this side, along with the awning and awning light. Moving on, you've then got your external barbecue point. All you'll need with this is a bayonet fitting to go into the end of a pipe which will connect to your barbecue, turn your gas bottles on and that will allow you to feed it through. Well, on the topic of moving away from the gas bottles, you do need to make sure that when you're travelling, them gas bottles are turned off um, due to obviously safety. However, turn them on when you are, of course, using them. Underneath here you have some storage which will allow you to access the double height floor and above this you'll notice you have your fridge vents which are on the side of the vehicle. Now as you can imagine this is where the fridge pulls all of its air from and uh, which it uses to cool the fridge. So for example if you have the sun on this side of the vehicle beating down on the van naturally this area is going to get hot so if you can help it I'd draw the awning out or try and keep it in as much shade as possible just to help that fridge out. Next to the fridge vents You've then got your cassette toilet. I'll open that up now and show you how to empty that and use it. With the cassette locker door open, you've got access to the cassette. To remove this, all you need to do is pull up on this tab and simply pull out. Now, before you do that, you need to make sure that the blade on the toilet is always closed. For example, if that blade on the toilet is open, when you go to remove this cassette, it will get stuck and ultimately jammed. And if you continue to uh, obviously pull it out, it'll stop. I'll go into more depth on the inside about the, the blade and how to use that, but as I say, that's one thing to mention, make sure that the blade is always closed. To remove it, as I mentioned, pull up and simply slide out like so. What I'll do is I'll pull it onto the ground here and then just show you how to empty it. With the cassette out, you'll notice at the front you have your funnel, which all you need to do is twist and then take the cap off. And then on the back, you have an orange button. The orange button on the back releases a vacuum, which is internal to the cassette, and what that'll mean is when you're emptying it, all the contents can, uh, can simply uh, head out of the cassette in one steady slurry without any splashback or anything like that. Once you've done that, put a bit of water in the top there, shake it around and swill it out, and then empty it once again. Once you've done that, put the cap back on that and turn the funnel back into its place like here. 
Now, one thing to notice as well is you have got another orange little lever on the side here, which, as you can see, does turn and twist. You need to make sure that that is always in that position. Never and put the uh, cassette back in that position because in essence this is what makes contact with the blade you want to make sure that it's always in that position um, when you're removing it and obviously putting it back in so therefore there's no need for you to mess around with that or turn it once you're at this point simply pick up the cassette line it up like so and slide back in to that position and let the little handle in there connect into place moving away from the cassette and onto the back of the vehicle. At the back you'll notice that you've got a, a, a hookup point for a three pin electric plug. Now bearing in mind that you will need an adapter which will go into there to give you power on the outside. And then at the back you have your garage door. Once open it will gain you access to the garage and in the garage you can see that we've got your carpets, your jack along with your ladder for the front drop down bed, your awning pole and then in the back, all of your paperwork and all of the uh, the belongings for the vehicle. Now, what you will notice as well is you've got, due to the bed on this, you can raise and lower it as you can, as indicated by the struts. To do so, you have this black little lever, which all you'll need to do is connect onto the end of here and then simply turn. That will allow you to raise and lower the bed depending on how big you want the garage and how high you want the bed on the inside. For your awning, your awning is a thule awning you can see that you've got a little T point there. Your awning will simply connect up to this point here, all you need to do is push the awning in, turn it halfway, and then it will uh, be locked into the awning. You then need to continue to wind out and wind the awning out to a point where you can reach it. Don't wind it out all the way, wind it to a simply the highest point that you can reach, and then drop the legs and let it take the weight of the awning. Then all you need to do is simply angle the legs and co continue to wind out until it's all the way out. It should come out around three meters. Now do bear in mind that if it is windy or for example the weather's bad I recommend taking the awning back in um, due to it being a massive sail on the side of the van and you don't want to run the risk of it snapping or coming off so do bear that in mind. Moving on from this section here you'll notice on the back you've got the reversing camera which is up at the top along with moving on to the other side another access point into the garage. One thing before moving on as well, you can see that your external shower head is there, which as I move on to the side of the van is the next component. Your external shower is located here, looks similar to the external barbecue point. You'll have a key which will open this up and all you need to do is, as I've shown you, connect your little shower head into there and that'll allow you to use a shower. Of course, you need to make sure your pump is on to activate that. And again, I'll show you how to operate that on the inside of the vehicle. Moving further on, you'll notice that we're currently hooked up and this is where you need to hook it up when you're on mains electric, so when you're on your campsites, simply plug into there and then you're away and that'll provide you with your 240 volt power. Next, you have a locker door and above that you've got the Aldi heating boiler, which is the chimney for it. In essence, this can get very hot, um, so do be careful of that. You don't want to get that too hot because that could sting and burn you, so be careful. Um, but this is obviously where the vehicle uh, will be heated and, uh, and this is the breathing point for it. Below here, as I mentioned, is your locker door. I'll open up this and this will give you your drain down points for your fresh water, your waste water and also your boiler drain down, which will open up now. Okie dokie, so with the locker door open, you can see that you've got your fresh water tank here, as indicated. And you've also got access to your leisure batteries, which are underneath the double height floor. Beneath that, you've also two boiler drain down points. Now, as I mentioned, there's three drain down points in the vehicle. You've got your fresh water, your waste water, and your two boiler drain down points, which are here, as I say. So your boiler drain down points will be emptied from here. In the up position as they are, they are open. All you need to do is flick them down and that'll secure and finalize um, the circuit and, uh, and stop them from obviously leaking out when in use. Now, when you're not using the vehicle, always make sure that these are in the up position because these, as I say, will, free, will drain the van of water and stop the boiler from ever freezing up with water if you were to use it in the colder months. So do bear that in mind. Um, so please make sure that they are drained down when not using the vehicle. Your other drain down points for your fresh water and your waste water are actually on the inside, um, which I'll show you. 
and that's just simply done um, as I say remotely from the vehicle coming back to the fresh water fill up point all you need to do to fill up the water is unscrew this cap and put a food grade hose pipe in there and let that system fill up once you've filled that up it'll come out of the vehicle you'll have a, a little overspill cap which was actually in the garage which will clip onto there to stop any water so, from coming in the garage and then you're good to go it's as simple as that So moving on from the outside, we're going to move on to the inside of the vehicle. And just as you walk in through the habitation door, you'll notice you're greeted by the control panel, which is up at the top. So firstly, as indicated at the top, I'll just let that focus in on the lights. As you can see at the top, it'll indicate your hookup point. It's quite difficult to see on the video, uh, but at the, at the top, it'll indicate that you're hooked up to a mains electric. And un underneath that, you've got your main isolator switch. The isolator switch, as you can see, will turn everything off in the van uh, for your 2, 30 and 12 volt systems. The only thing that it will remain on are your porch light, which is in here, along with the uh, awning light and door light on the outside of the vehicle, just so you can see obviously where you're going. Clicking that back on, you can see coming back up, you've got a few more switches, which are indication switches. These will indicate various temperatures and also your levels in the vehicle. So firstly, it'll indicate the temperature inside the vehicle. Click on the next one, that'll indicate the temperature on the, uh, on the outside of the vehicle. And then next to that, finally, you have your tank heater, which if you are using it in cool climates, you can simply use the tank heater to heat up the wastewater tank, just to make sure it doesn't freeze. Now below that row of switches, you have some more switches. If you click on your habitation battery, which is the first one, it'll show you your level. If you then select your vehicle battery, again, it'll show you your level. Finally, if you click on this button here, this will show you your fresh and wastewater level on here. At the moment, I've nothing in, hence why it's, not, it's reading nothing. But at the top is your fresh water, below is your wastewater. Next, you've then got your pump button. Click that, that will activate the pump. Now for your pump, you need to make sure that all your um, vehicle is, is fully uh, stocked up with water. So you've put water in the system. Once you've done that, come to your pump and turn it on. You then need to come to each of your taps, including your shower. You need to turn it on and turn it to hot. What that's going to do is it's going to pull fresh water from the fresh water tank into the boiler and then out of the tap. It's going to splurt and splutter and then once it's running steadily, you have primed your system for your hot water. Once you've done that, flick it over to cold and do the exact same. You need to make sure you do it on your hot first because that will get water in the boiler and allow that to begin to hot, uh, to heat up rather. Because obviously with your boiler, it isn't instant hot water. Do bear that in mind. It does take about half an hour to get up to temperature. So do bear that in mind. And as I say, once you've done that, you can leave your pump on, providing you've still got water in the system. Because on each of your taps, you've got a micro switch, which will activate and deactivate the tap whenever you're wanting to access the water. Coming back up, moving on from the pump, you've then got all your switches for your lights. So if you wanted, you can simply turn on and off the areas using these switches here. Or going around the vehicle using these switches as you can see, you can turn off various lights in the sections of the van. Next, coming away from the control panel, you'll notice that this is the spot for your telly. And below that, you have the points to plug it in and activate it. Below this, you have a cupboard with a bit more storage in, as you can see. And also up at the top here, you have your heating system along with another button here which is the heat exchanger. Your heat exchanger when turned on will activate there and what this is great for is for example if you're moving off site in the next half an hour so you're packing up the vehicle if you click that button on what that will do is it will prime your engine and in essence heat it up with the tank so in essence when you travel off your tank, your engine rather, is already already up to temperature. So when you turn your aircon on to allow the heaters to uh, to operate and to heat the cab, um, it'll give you in instant heat. So it's quite a nice feature having that. So I recommend doing that uh, about half an hour before you're due to set off from site. Now next, you've then got your Aldi heating system. Your heating system is really important. Um, this is an Aldi heating system, so it's wet central heating. To operate this, you simply click this button and that'll turn on the control panel. 
let that load up and then once on you can begin to use it firstly click your menu and as you can see it's very simple system to use up at the top you've got your vehicle temperature as indicated by the thermometer in the house using the touch screen you can increase and lower the temperature below that you've then got your water temperature similar system press once to increase as you can see and down to decrease it's dead simple for your heating on your um, for your shower rather if you click it once that is approximately 40 degrees in terms of heat and if you, press, if you press it again it's approximately 70 degrees the full bar you'll be using that when you're uh, washing your pots and pans and then the half bar which as I say is about 40 degrees you'll be selecting when you're taking a shower and things like that there are your heating controls and then below that you've got the option of selecting which fuel you're after with this you can either run it off gas or electric to select that Firstly, you can run it off here, one k, uh, sorry, one kilowatt of electric. Press again, two kilowatt electric, or press again, three kilowatt electric. Now, obviously, the de depending on how much power you are supplied with, the majority of the time you'll be able to run it off three kilowatt electric. But as I say, it will depend on how much power the campsite provides you. For example, if they don't provide you with enough power and you're forced to have your electric on one kilowatt electric, you're of course going to have to run it off your gas and your gas button is just beneath here. So if you click that, that'll try and ignite um, and heat the vehicle via gas. Now if you're wild camping, you can only run it off your gas, so do bear that in mind, it's not going to run off anything else. You have got the option of selecting activated functions, depending on obviously the temperature. And going into your settings panel, have a click through this, the main thing that you need to know in here is the reset button which is up at the top. You're only ever going to need to reset the system if you was to ever, for example, select a fuel that you haven't got. So for example, if you're wild camping and you're trying to heat the vehicle using uh, 3 kilowatt electric, however you've simply not got 3 kilowatt electric because you're not hooked up, you'll get an error code on here which will begin to flash. If that is the case, you need to click the reset button, that will reset the panel. You then need to uh, wait 20 minutes or so and let that do a complete reset until you can use it. To turn this off, simply hold this button and you'll get an off symbol, just like so. So moving on from the heating system, as I mentioned outside, you've got a, uh, your, your drain down points are internal to this vehicle and they are just located underneath this little hatch here. You can see that you've got your waste water tank which is at the back there and your fresh water tank which is at the front. Your waste water is controlled and drained down via a button which is at the front of the van which I'll show you in a minute. It's just beneath, behind there. Again I'll show you that in a minute. But your waste, uh, your fresh water rather, is all controlled through this little nib here. All you need to do is simply turn this and as you can hear that will open up the system. Now as indicated by the sticker here this will take 120 litres of water. Now, for example, if you're moving off site and you're wanting to keep it a bit of water in the vehicle due to um, because you don't know whether the next site you're going to get any water or you want to simply just keep a bit in uh, for a cup of tea on the way home, um, what you can do is if you turn this, this nib halfway, you'll reach a little lug. You'll feel that lug, stop at that lug and what that will do is it will drain the entire system down to 20 litres and it will mean that you can travel with 20 litres. However, if you are moving off site um, and you don't want any water in the vehicle or you're putting it into storage, simply carry on turning that past the lug, you'll hear the click and that will empty the entire system free of water. Now what I recommend, and this goes for all your drain down points, is when you're on the site you'll have a massive grid. What you need to do is tr um, drive over that grid simply um, drain all your systems um, into that grid and then once you've done that you can leave them all open because as you're traveling home the weight uh, sorry the uh, vibration of the road is going to make sure that all that water is dumped out of the vehicle and at the end of the day it is just water it's not containing any any harmful uh, harmful chemical that's going to harm anything all right and that is all done from here i'll quickly show you where the waste drain down point is just whilst we're on the topic of it now as mentioned, this is your waste water drain down, and this is all done electrically. All you need to do is flick that down, and that will drain down the system. You can see it's just located at the front of your lounge here, just on this seat base here. So moving on into the kitchen area, we've discussed about obviously priming your system. You'll notice that you've got 
your hob which is all on gas which is nice so when you're wild camping you can run all your hobs independently up at the top you've got storage here and located in here you'll notice that you've got your Truma aircon which all you need to do is simply click that button the power button and that will begin the aircon here and you've also got some additional keys which are the barbecue point keys and the shower point which are external to the vehicle beneath here you've got some more storage same again in the bottom one and in this last floor panel here you have a bit more underfloor storage as well again some storage just to show you here which is fully accessible turning around you'll notice that you've got your fridge and tech tower which is combined with an oven and grill so your oven and grill is self-explanatory your fridge however is slightly different now as I mentioned on the outside your fridge is nothing like a uh, normal domestic fridge that you get at home uh, due to the power that it's uh, supplied with so to operate this this is a three-way fridge and by Dometic it's uh, called a three-way fridge because in essence there are three ways to power it so I get to an angle that you can see as you can see as indicated on here you've got three ways to power it you have three icons or three main icons rather this first one is your hook up, so when you're hooked up you run it off your 230 volts, so you'll click this one. When you're wild camping you'll run it off your gas, which is this indicated by this little flame here. And then when you're travelling down the motorway, or you're travelling um, with the engine on, you'll run it off your leisure battery, which is your 12 volt feed there. Now a lot of people think they can run the fridge off um, uh, the 12 volt battery when they are travelling. Uh, sorry, when they're wild camping. However, that is not the case. Um, if that was the case, you'd simply just drain the fridge. Uh, sorry, drain the whole van, in fact, of power. Hence, why it'll only allow you to drain. Uh, sorry, to uh, power the fridge using the gas here. So do bear that in mind. Now, next to this, you've then got an A button, which stands for auto. So what I'd recommend is press this button to uh, turn on the fridge, turn on the auto function, and that'll automatically assign whatever gas. Or whatever fuel you've got to the vehicle to power the fridge so then you're never going to run into that issue at the side you've then got an option for venting which will circulate the air you've then got your vehicle's temperature uh, for the fridge as well and then finally you've got a reset button on the bottom there which is just here um, and that'll as I say allow you to reset the entire fridge now to be honest the only time you should ever reset your fridge is if you get an error code on here or it starts flashing due to a fault and the only time that will occur is if you've knocked it off the auto function and you're trying to power the fridge using the fuel you haven't got so do bear that in mind before moving on from the fridge your freezer's up at the top fridge is below as i've mentioned it's nothing like a domestic fridge so if you're putting uh, cool things in the fridge it does a good job at maintaining the temperature sorry so put cool things in the fridge and um, if you want frozen things to be in the freezer put frozen things in moving on from the kitchen area into the bathroom space you can see that moving through you've got access to the bathroom which is here now in the back you have got a dividing door which will slide across and pull to here to divide the space and the same again to divide the bedroom using these two doors here which will pull together in the back we've discussed about obviously priming the system and underneath here just to point out you have got some more storage that you can make use of same again next to the toilet as well with a bit of storage now coming on to the toilet, as I mentioned outside there's something called the blade which is really integral to the toilet and you need to make sure it's always open when in use. The blade is this piece of plastic down here to open the cassette, pull towards you and as I say that'll open the cassette and allow you to use it. So when using this, pull this blade towards you to open the cassette so all the waste can drop into that cassette. Once you've done that, press the blue button up at the top which will activate your flush and that'll flush the cassette once you've done that push the blade away from you that'll seal it um, and that uh, and, and then you are good to go now two reasons why you do always close the blade one reason to stop any odors from escaping and second reason to mainly stop obviously from you getting into the habit of when you do remove the cassette to stop you from running into the issue of that being open with the blade so then when you remove it it simply breaks so it just saves you from uh, from making that making that uh, that error now coming up at the top as I've mentioned your flush is just 
indicated by this blue button here. Now one thing to know is that you do need your, uh, your pump on for that to activate, so do bear that in mind. And you will get a red light up here just to indicate when this is full, so bear that in mind. Moving on from the toilet, up above you have got a bit more storage and you can see in this unit here you have got a tank. That tank is for your Aldi heating system and this holds something called glycol solution. That is an antifreeze solution um, to in essence make sure that the Aldi uh, water doesn't, doesn't obviously freeze during use. You'll notice that you've got a loose pipe here, that's simply a breather pipe and that is how it's supposed to be. And on the other side you've a bit more, you've a bit more storage. Coming round, you've got some really good hanging space which is just at the side of the uh, of the shower point as you can see and like I said with everything your shower you do need to prime as well moving into the back to your bedroom you'll notice that the bed is at the high point at the moment um, and you have got obviously access to that by the steps moving into the bedroom area you've got some storage up here you will notice as well that this specific model has been fitted with a motorhome Wi-Fi system which is just in there and beneath you've got some more storage there as well. Either side you've more hanging space and up at the top again a little bit more storage. On each of your windows as well one thing to notice is using these clips here you can undo the window push that out and allow that to open as you can see. Now on each of your windows you can if you wanted leave this on a venting which as you can see you've got a little point there just to allow uh, to simply come through the vehicle and circulate. However, when you are traveling, please make sure that all these windows are closed, including your skylights, which is one up there, because um, you don't want any wind from getting underneath there, which will simply just rip it off. Please do be careful about that. Above, oh, sorry, pulling up, you've got your blind and then your fly screen. And as I say, you've got a fly screen on your door and all of your windows, including your skylights as well. Coming back from the bedroom area, you'll also notice that you've got two switches um, in your bathroom here, area here. The first one in here, as I mentioned on the outside, you do need to make sure that your gas bottles are turned off when traveling. And when um, you're on site, you can turn them on. To then continue and get um, uh, gas into the system, you then need to click this button here. It'll go amber, then green, and that'll allow all the system to work um, and feed the gas through. In essence, that's just a cut off valve just for safety. Finally, you've then got a heater switch here. This is a simple heater which is in the floor, which will warm the floor up, uh, which provides you a nice little bit of heat. Now, the final bit that I need to show you is your RCD breaker, um, and that is actually on the outside of the vehicle, which I'll just show you now. So, coming back to your service locker, as you can see, I've just removed this black cover. All you need to simply do is remove this using the rubber bungs and then this will gain you access to your fuses which are at the back there as you can see and also your RCD breaker which is up there. If the vehicle ever trips you need to come to this point and simply flick them switches back up. Now one thing to just note is with this you have got a test button on there so for example if you can't get any power to the vehicle all you need to do is click that test button and if them two little valves actually uh, trip down you know that you're in essence getting power to the vehicle so it's therefore not a problem with the site that you're using or a fault with a hookup cable it's a fault with your vehicle and it'll allow you to isolate the issue from there you can check all your fuses which are just behind here so that concludes the handover video on the Burstnet Elegance I hope you enjoyed